Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is part two in Seasons and we started the Mushroom and Frog page together. So this is how it looks like so far. If I can move all my pencil supplies out of the way. Now, last time I said we were going to use a different colour combination for the leaves over the, here. But having reflected on that, I think we need to bring this colour over this side. So I think we're going to do those the same. And it was this colour combination. So we'll just come in and do a quick reminder of where we were. So it was dark green, Kelly green and Celadon green in the Prismacolor range. So we did, let me just sharpen that pencil quickly. It takes a lot of pencil work, you know, these pages. <laughs> right, so we went in here with the Kelly Green and it will go, it should go straight over that paint where I've got it over there on the background so I put the Kelly Green in like that then we did Celadon Green it might not be as light as the others but it'll be okay okay now down the center we ran the dark green and onto the stem and then we used the Kelly green to blend that through and then we put a tiny little bit of dark green just into our into our initial blend and then back in with the Kelly Green. So hence why my pencil's getting short. <laughs> okay, so that was, that's how I'm gonna do all of the rest of those leaves. Not these down here, these long reed ones. We'll find a different combo for those. Now, having played about with the mushroom colors, cause you know I wasn't happy with the stalk that I did, I think I've solved that issue so let's let me get another card and I'll write it down with you as I go because I want to make sure I get it right okay so I've got another little card here let's focus on these little mushrooms seems as they're in shot now I have got espresso which is what we used last time really pretty color have I got a pen yes goodness me people could I possibly be organised? <laughs> so, espresso, and that is 1099. Then I want 50% um, warm grey. And that is 1054. Put a bit of that there for you and then I want um, no I don't want that I don't know how that's got there I want um, eggshell eggshell which is 1040. Am I right? No, I'm not. <laughs> 104 people. And then 10% warm grey. Which is 1050. Okay. So. I'm going to pick the edge that I think would be darkest. Again, I'm not very good with my lights and shadows, so I'll just go in with where I think. Um, so but I'm going to go on this side, and I'm going to bring in my espresso and give it a little bit of a darker edge in those shadows. Then in with my 50% warm grey. I'll let that lessen out. And then eggshell. So I'm going to put the eggshell in the remaining space. And 
and then just blend those greys in with the 10% warm grey. So we get much more of a softer stem on the mushroom. Looking for my brush. Okay, and then we can just redefine that espresso, just so it's not as dark as the underneath of the mushroom. There we go. Now I'm not going to keep going with those because obviously we've got to do these little doodaddy bits, whatever they are. But that's how the base of the mushrooms will be done. Now, we've got froggies. We've got little froggies, people. And I'm going to do them all the same because I want to unify the page. So I'm going to bring the colours in from the berries on the opposite page to him. And we're going to introduce new colours. So I'm going back to my Derwent um, watercolours. But please don't panic if you don't have them because I'll give you colours that will match. So we're going to go in with this green. And in the Derwent range it is mint. And that's what we're going to paint our little froggy with. So mint green, let me put it here, which is this one at the bottom. And I'm going to paint the top of him mint green. Just going to put it in there. And I have, I do water it down because I do find if you go in sort of really thick with it, initially, it's quite difficult to put your pencil over the top. So, his little leggies. Might need a bit more paint than that. These little frog legs are going to be this green colour. So in fact the top half of him, but we're going to blend those blues in that we used for the berries. So that's going to look quite cool. So I'm not going to worry too much, I'm just going over him. On his top half. And his leg here. And this leg. I think the little tiny bits of jewellery I will do with a gel pen. Just take that green off the background. There we go. And then the blue, we're going to use what is called in this set turquoise, which um, is very much like the electric blue in Prisma. So if you don't have these paints, it's like the electric blue. And the mint is like, um, say, light green or true green. So let's mix this blue up, or this turquoise. Let's get that going. A bit more water. Okay, and I'm going in on his tummy. He's going to look awful to start with, but just bear with me. Um, because it comes out so cute. There we go. Right, so we have to let that dry, but all my little froggies are gonna be the same. So we'll just recap. So we're gonna do the mint. Now the mint is on the little leggies. And don't worry about that, whether you you know, we're going to blend those colours in, so on that little leggy on this foot and on his face down to his smile there we go little smiling green frog and then on the belly is the turquoise so. Or the electric blue if you're using the prismas. There we go. And then we've got one last little froggy which is over here. Let's move you over. So again we're going to take the um, mint, just making sure I've got enough mixed up, and all the way down to his little smile. A bit more water I think. All the way down to his little smile around his eye. Then on his back. 
<coughs> down on his back and we're going to blend his belly in. There you go, on that leg. We will be using pencils over the top so um, it will blend together. It's not just going to look like a mishmash of blues and greens. There we go. Right, and then the underbelly is this lovely turquoise colour. Yeah, so I do find if you mix, they're much better off mixing them with water, otherwise they, can, they kind of resist the pencils. As soon as you mix them properly, the pencils lay over the top perfectly. So this is our blue belly. Our electric blue belly. All right, so let's come, let's move my paints and then reposition our book and come back in and have a look. Okay, so those froggies look really bright. They're going to look even brighter because we're going to bring in berry colour for their spots and their feet. All these leaves are going to be green, but not the reedy bits. I'm going to leave those out. Um, I wouldn't recommend you do the bases of the uh, mushrooms. I'd probably leave that till last um, because, like I say, dragging dark colours into light. So I'm going to go off, as usual, finish all those leaves, and let the froggies dry, and we'll meet up to do the colouring on the frogs. All right, my lovely friends, I'll see you in a second. Okay folks, I've finished all the leaves and I think that looks much better because it sort of unifies the page. If I'd have brought in too many greens, there's a lot going on already. So, we're going to focus on our little froggy up here. Now they're all dry. Let me move you over and bring you in. Here we are. It's got a lot going on my desk. Can you hear it all? <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with the greens on our froggy. So we've got parrot green. 1006 and light green 920 and that's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to go in with some shadow. I'm just lightly going in this over this um, what green was it? Mint from the uh, Derwent set. And I'm going to put some shadow in on this little fella. I'm just going in little circles and then deepen it up where I want it. So I'm going to go up to his little wrist and bring that down. If you can see, excellent. <laughs> Panicked for a minute. I'm going to go try and avoid the little... It's not easy when you're colouring in small spaces and you want to blend. But we're going to try and avoid his little warty bits around his necklace. Gonna come around his eye. Around this eye. And above his lip. Like that. And then we're gonna blend in the light green 920. So let's blend that in. And that blends, so like I said, if you don't have these colours, the paint colours, you can just use the pencil. That blends beautifully. We're going to bring that down slightly into his little hand. Leave his elbow a bit lighter. Uh, we haven't done his leg. Back to the parrot green. <laughs> uh, we're going to put some dark in here. Just to emphasise that little fold in his leg. And then back to our light green. Bring that down just a little bit onto his um, little foot. Okay, and then round these, let's blend that in where we didn't fill in. Don't go too heavy handed otherwise you won't be able to go over your little warty bits. And that's how I'm going to bring the blue in. So I'm going round his eye with the light green. Oh, 
around that height with the light green. And there we have it. The green part is done. Okay, let's bring in our blues. So we've got electric blue, 1040, periwinkle, 1025, and Indian throne blue, 208. So if you recognise those two were from the berries on the other page. So we're going to bring in a little bit of electric blue. So where should we go? Let's just start down here. And this is just going to give me a little bit of that a wax base to work on. And fill in any other little spaces that the paint wasn't very even with, or I wasn't very even with, should I say. And that is a really good match for that, um, what colour was it? Turquoise in the set. Let's bring that up. So also, oh, I didn't do his other little lag. Poor little fella. <coughs> um, well, I don't know what I was saying. I don't know what I was going to say. Um, a really good match is the last thing I can remember me saying. Really good match for the Derwent uh, pastel colours. Bring that down into his leg a little bit. So this will help us to see. Oh, that's what I was saying. This will help us to see light and shadow where we want our darker colours. Okay, then I'm going to use a little bit of white. And then I'm just going to lighten up some areas around here. It's also helped to smooth things out, blend it. Okay, go back in with our electric blue, deepen that up. Put a little bit on his smile. Okay. There we are. Right now, we're going to bring in the last two colours, which is Periwinkle and Indian Throne Blue. So with the Indian Throne Blue, I'm going to do the little bits of his toes and it'll come up a little bit. So a little bit of his toes and come up a little bit. There we are. Alright, then we're going to take Periwinkle and blend that in. I'm going straight over that light green that we put down. And I'm just going to get lighter as we meet that light green. And then we're going to have, when I've smoothed it out, we're going to have a nice mishmash of a bluey green frog. Because this page is all about fantasy and we I wanted really bright cheerful lovely page so we're going to do the same here I am going to outline him so those toes will show up better when I've put my um, white gel pen around him and then up here with the blue like this Just blend that in. Okay, we can put a little bit of that periwinkle round here. So darken that up. And back there. And on his smile. And then perhaps we'll go back to electric blue to finish that smile off. There we go. All right. Now, taking the two darkest colors, we're just going to put his little warty bits in. So like we did with the berries, I'm going dark at the bottom. And then I'm gonna blend that periwinkle in. Let 
There we go. So dark, oops, dark at the bottom, and blend the periwinkle in. There we go. Very busy page. What made me choose this page? I don't know. Although, I mean, I love it, but there couldn't have been any more elements in a colour along if I'd have tried, really, could there? <laughs> but you'll see, once we put the blue in here, um, let me just do that quickly, and then you'll see. You know, that's his necklace. And we can even deepen him up even more if we want to put, um, we could put some periwinkle in on his skin. If you feel it warrants it. Down here, we could deepen him up a bit. A bit round here. Ah, what do you think? I think he's very cute. Right, so that's how all the froggies are going to be done. Just going to blend that out with a bit of white. Let's have a look at his eye. I bet I didn't write it down. No. But, colours that we've used before. So, let's do this one. I don't think I need that. Oh, I might do this one. This one. And this one. So, I'm not going to write the names down, I'll tell you the names and just write the number. So it is Scarlet Lake 923, it is um, Pale Vermilion 921, and Spanish Orange 1003, and possibly a bit of Cream 914. Okay, I've got to give them a bit of a sharpen because they're tiny spots. So, on the edge of his eye, I'm going in with, sorry, I've moved my little tag, 923, which is Scarlet Lake. Um, and I'm going to put that in here. It's quite a tiny space, but we'll put it in. And I've just done it sort of quite um, a rough, jaggedy edge. Okay, then we're going with Spanish Orange. Of Spanish orange and then I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip this one and go straight to cream and see how we get on with that. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. There you go. And then go in with the cream. Yeah. So I'm gonna take that one out. And then we can just go back in with the um, Scarlet Lake and just really redden up around that edge. And the Pale Vermilion, we'll put that back in. There we go. Like that. And then um, when I've got, um, what am I talking about when? I've got a Jelly Roll Black Glaze pen here. So I'm going to put that in. And that should really bring out that orange. We'll leave a tiny bit of white in the centre. We can go back in with a gel pen if there's not enough. 
there we go. I will go over that bit when it dries. Okay, little froggy. I like him, he's very cute. And um, I will go round with a jelly roll. Let's just make sure it's working. And at the end of the picture, I'll do all this. But just to show you, I will go round our little froggy friend in white gel pen. And it will bring back all those features like that. So he won't be lost in the mushroom. There we go. One of my favourite parts. I love outlining these bits. There we go. There. So that's what he'll look. So he won't be lost. He'll look really cool when we outline him. Right. Come on, let's have a look. So can you see? Not that far, Lucy. Can you see the difference? Um, I might, you know, if you want him deeper around his little body, it might pay you to do that, I suppose, with a little bit more shading. So just periwinkle into that electric blue. There we go. But I think he looks super cool. And that's brought in the orange from the flowers, the blue from the berries. And we've just got that shock of green, which we've obviously already got green on the page. So, let's come out. There we go. I'm going to go off and do all the frogs in exactly the same manner. And then we will meet back up. We've got, what have we got left? The, the details down here, which, I've got the little spider, which I'm going to do in black jelly roll glaze. Black and red, because he's scary. <laughs> Oh, we've got the snail, we've got the crystals, we've got quite a bit to do. So, I'm going to go and finish my froggies. And we'll meet back up and I'll have a plan for, I think we'll probably focus on the crystals next. Alright friends, see you in a second. Okay, <clears throat> the little froggies are done. And a word of warning, I don't know if you can see it, yes. I smudged my jelly roll glaze, so be patient with it. It doesn't dry as quickly as normal jelly roll because it's that bit thicker to get the glaze on it. I don't know if you're going to be able to... You can see it on the bigger eye. I don't know if you're picking up on that glaze, but it's there. It's They're incredible. All right. I want to look at these crystals. So this is for the snail's body, so we'll focus on that in a minute. These are the colours that I'm using for the crystal. Z, the crystal Z. So I might bring in a little bit of purple, I'm not sure yet, but um, let's move over even more so I can fit you all in. There we go. So if we have a look at this big one at the bottom here. Now I've picked out um, some of the more pastel -y tones um, and then we're going to outline them in white, don't forget, so it'll look even better. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take spring green and I'm just on each one of them, I'm just going to perhaps do it differently. So I'm putting spring green on the edge of that. We'll put a little bit of it in the bottom and then let it fade out. Then I'm going to add the um, pink rose. We might need a bit of purple, we'll see. Of pink rose up there. that's going to look a bit muddy because it's got that um, paint over it and then the cloud blue let's put that in so I'm trying to reflect some of the other colors that are on the page might need a bit of a deeper blue. Let's have some electric blue. So let's put that on because it comes out soft. Let's do 
electric blue, which is 1040. So Let's put a little bit of where I had that um, powder blue, that's better. Let's put that blue in there. And that's going to bring out the other colour look. You do want to try and keep it pastel but when you put the um, white around the edge of it, it will tone it down. Okay, now I feel that the green is a little bit too bright. My fault, I've got in a bit heavy handed, so I'll turn it down a bit with white. Okay, let's do another one. Um, let's do some more blue on this one. So we'll put the electric blue straight on and just alternate where you put the colours really. And then you'll get like it, almost like it's trying to pick up different colours. So we'll have a little bit of green. And then we'll go in with our, oops, we'll go in with our pink if I don't chuck it at you. <laughs> there we go. There. And I think just to sort of, let's do another couple, just a sort of mishmash of the colours. Right, well we've had blue, let's have a pink. Let's have predominantly pink, shall we? And we'll go in with a little bit of green down the side there. And then our electric blue. Just so it sort of varies them up. Then when the entire, all the crystals are finished, this is where the magic happens. And I'm just using a gel pen. You can use a Posca or whatever you've got. But I really like the jelly rolls. And I'm going to white out the black lines. And then what we're left with is this, should be left with, she says, is with this soft, subtle look of crystals. Don't do this until you finish the entire crystals part because um, you may rub the white gel pen off with your pencil. The, I've just used that <laughs> bit of my hand and clean the, any wax build up off of the pan and go back in. There we go. And then it runs beautifully again. Um, we can put some white in there. And I will be stickalizing them. So they're, they're glittery as well. What do you think, people? What do you think? I know it's hard to tell before they've, they've all finished, before they're all done, but I think it's gonna look incredible um, with a little bit of glitter over the top. Okay, so I'm gonna move those colors to the side for a minute and we're gonna come over here to Miss Your Snail. Okay, and for the snail, for the snail's body here, I've got 30% warm grey, 10% warm grey, and a little bit of eggshell. So, at his base where he meets the mushroom, I'm going in with the 30% warm grey. That's the darkest colour that we've got. Just lightly. I'll bring that in. And I might put some, um, oh, what's it called? Glossy accents over his body so that he's shiny. 
absolutely looks slimy. Then in with the 10% warm grey. Gonna even go up there. 10% warm grey, blend all that through. Okay, then just to warm him up a little bit, we're gonna add the eggshell. So I'm just going to really lightly, because eggshell actually is quite a bright colour, but I want to give the appearance that the um, the crystal is giving off light. So I'm just going up this antenna. There we go. And then I'm just going to go back in with my 30% warm grey. Sorry, excuse me a minute. Just deepen up around the bottom again. And then I'll go in with um, a gel pen or um, an acrylic paint pen to give, to give him some speckles, his slimy effect. There we go. Can't leave it alone. I have to make sure <laughs> it's done. Okay, back in with the egg shell. Nice and easy. And then we're going to go back to our crystal colours that we had earlier. So let's see. Let's do um, let's do the electric blue. Okay, so we're going to have the electric blue coming down here. So I'm going to use electric blue. And that's going to meet that. We'll have a little bit at the edge. Okay, we'll have some electric blue there and where there. And so I'm just kind of picking out the points of the diamond. And we're going to go in with a bit of green, so our spring green. Put that in because that's nice and bold and bright. We'll have maybe a little bit of that at the base. Then we'll take the pink and we'll put some pink in. Just drop that in. Just going back over any places that I feel need that little bit extra colour. Okay. I don't want to overwhelm it, so just keeping my layers light. Give me the pink. We can take the white gel pen and do it here. Okay, best bit. Because it really brings this um, crystals to life. I would add purple, but I don't want it to muddy it up. I don't want it to end up looking muddy, the colours. Okay, just make sure I cover all those black lines. Excuse my thumb. I think the key thing to, to when you're doing these these little crystals is not to worry about it just place the colour um, crystals are crystals 
pick up, don't they, or diamonds, pick up the colour that's around them. Unless they've got their own colouring, you know. Um, so yeah, don't worry about it too much. Nearly there. Now I might go back over that when it's dry just to make sure any black bits have gone. And that's only because my hands aren't steady. I shake a lot. And we're just going to do this black line here. There we go. So let's come out and have a look now. We've got a lot going on on this page, <laughs> all these pages. All right, there. So can you see, I think they're gonna look beautiful. When we've outlined the things that I'm gonna outline, I think they're gonna look gorgeous. So I'm gonna take for these reeds, these long reeds, did I write it down? Probably not. Have I got it here? No, right, so I'll stick it on here. Um, we're going to have the original Kelly Green, so Kelly Green, which is 1096, that's what we use for those leaves, and then we're going to bring in the beautiful light green. I will bring the camera in in a second, I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> Nine, two, oh. Now the less colour that we sort of introduce now, um, the, the more unified the page will look. It won't just look like a, a, a muddle of bright colours. So I'm going to take the Kelly Green, if I bring you in like I promised. There we go. And I'm going to go where I think the shadow would be, where it would be at its darkest. And we're going to use that as, a, as our shadow colour. I'm going to do it darker on this edge and then really lightly go right out to the other side. And that will... Have oh, I smudged it again? No, it just feels like that. Um, and that will help us to blend the beautiful bright green colour over it. So that not everything's looking the same. Okay, so let's add the light green now. And this should really lift it. <clears throat> there we go and we can go back in this side and really deepen that up so we've still got quite a muted tone but a nice variation from those greens so we're going to go in with our Kelly Green around these little doodads green up here and then we're going to go in with our light green really brighten that up okay have we got any more yeah we've got a little one over here let's do it together why not green or light green uh, I like that we've got and we've got them all down here so I'm gonna come out because I need to go off and to finish all the crystals all the little reedy bits um, and then we'll come back and um, sort this path way out all right, my lovely friends, I'll see you in a second. All right, folks, I've finished all the crystals. Now, I've left, I've done some white, 
um, outlines just so you can see because this bit looks really dark and dingy and then when you put the white on it really brings it out so you don't need it that pastel so don't worry about that as will the frogs they will tone down as well a little bit so right back to my Derwent paints don't worry if you don't have it um, and I want to use the silver blue which is this grey on here and it's gorgeous and I'm going to do the path in that silver grey so I'm going to mix it up it's a really pretty colour and then I'm going to make sure I've got enough water in it like I said before um, it's fine if you don't want to use pencil work over it but they work better if you put some water and dilute them down okay so we'll come in you don't there's no um, there's no what's the word I'm looking for no skill I suppose involved I've missed one of those leaves um, I'm just gonna literally slap it on those plants up uh, the path not the plants like that. there we go let's make sure I've got enough mixing it up make sure I've got enough water And we're nearly there, folks. I know it seems like it's been a million years. I don't know how long this video is, but we're nearly there. That bit I'm going to do in green. Um, I think like grass around them. Um, I think we're nearly there. Just checking there's no more bits. Okay, so I have to wait and let that dry. It doesn't take long because we don't use much water. All right. So that's the colours I need for those. Now, okay, it's fallen out on the page. So for these rock type things, I'm going to use just the three colours. So we've got, and I'll put this card in, so we've got the 30% warm grey. Just trying to avoid my wet patch on there. It's got a piece of my hair. So the 30% warm grey, the 10% warm grey, and we're going to chuck in espresso. I've probably got this written down already, but how do you spell it? <laughs> One o oh, nine nine. Oh. So for these little boulders, is what I'm calling them. I'm going in with the espresso there. And I'm going to take the 30% um, warm grey. I'm going to blend that in. Okay, now down the side here, a little bit of the espresso. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do those little doodads in. We'll work it out. So I'm down one edge. Then I'm going in with the 10% warm grey. Smush those up together. and then the 10% on the edges. There we are. So that's how that little boulder is going to be done. And that's what I'm calling them boulders. I don't know what else to say about them. <laughs> and then these ones we're going to work from dark. Let's move my keyboard out the way. We're going to work from dark at the bottom to light at the top. So we're going to have the espresso, and these dark spaces. Just trying to work out where the space is here. 
There we go. Then in with our 30%. Back over that, blend that all through. Over that espresso. It's quite hard when you've got little those to go around those little doodads. I'm quite tempted to do those in an acrylic paint pen, to be honest. Right. And then the 10%, blend that out. There we go. So that's how the rocks are going to be done. Is our path dry enough? Still a bit damp. Oh, someone asked me, was there any bleed through? This is watercolour. Um, and there's, there's no bleed through whatsoever on the page, if you can see. So, no, it doesn't come through at all. If you're just cautious with the water you use. Right, now, the path. Um, I'm going to take... I had it written down. Right, I'm taking cloud blue. I'll just make sure that's dry enough. And I'm going to go up around the edges. So, cloud blue, 1023. I'm going to go up around the edges. I'm not going to worry about those little pebbles. We can go over those with a pen or... I'm filling around those little doodad bits. And I'm taking eggshell. So we're bringing in colours that we used in other places. And then I'm just going to drop that in. Just lightly. Get, hopefully get this kind of gravelly stone pathway look. So I'm just sort of randomly dropping it in in places. Just make sure your page is dry before you do this because it can tear the paper. Okay, I'm going in with a little bit more cloud blue. Alright, we've got a beautiful pathway beginning to appear. So we'll do the same down here. I'm going to take my cloud blue, blend that into that beautiful, what did they say it was silver grey I think, wasn't it? Push that right up there, into there. And we're going to use these colours for crowns and the gems inside the stones, uh, inside the flowers, excuse me. and then I'm going to chuck a load of stickles at this and some glossy accents and all sorts. It's going to look brilliant, if I do say so myself. <laughs> well, I hope it does. I'll be very upset after all this work if it doesn't. So just laying that eggshell in. Just dropping it in in some random spots again. I hope you can see those colours. Okay, I'm going to take one more time. I'm going to come back to my little paint palette. And here, this green is called Artichoke. And I'm going to put the Artichoke round the um, base here. It's a really lovely sort of earthy green. Make sure I've got enough water in there. Also helps your paint to go a bit further. And then in here... I'm going to put this earthy green. 
miles around here, around our little froggy. Can you see everything I'm doing? So I'm just filling up the space that the frog is sitting on beside the path and then we'll come back and do that painting shortly, uh, colouring shortly. So that's very confusing because that's all mushroom stems. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Right, dry my brush off. Okay, so what did we do just now? Um, we've done the path, the stones, which are pretty similar to the mushrooms, but I'm okay with that. Keeps the colours continuous. Right, these little... Um, paint on there now. These little gems inside the flowers, I'm going to use the 30% and the 10%. So, just at the base here... 30%, 10%, and I know that doesn't look very spectacular, but it will when we put diamond stickles over the top. There we go. There we go. I might even put it around the edge there too. There we go. 30% and 10%. I will do a little bit more work on the path so it's nicely blended. And I'm just trying to think whether I'm going to do those. And that might be a little bit too much. Okay. Right. So we've got the centre of the flowers, we've got the path that needs doing, we've got all the little stones that need doing. Let me come out. Oh, hang on, hang on. I know what I've forgotten. The crown. I want the crowns to look crystal too. So, I'm going to use the same colours. I'm going to use the 30%, the 10% and the espresso for the crown. So, I'm going to put the espresso at the bottom here. And at the sides. Uh, maybe a little bit there, a little bit there. Then the ten percent. Knock that back. And then we're going to go all over that with the ten percent. And we can always use white if we think if we feel that it's too dark. Dark, even if I can speak. What I might do is grab my white, a little bit of white, and just knock that colour back. Now we can put detail on with gel pen, that's my intention. Okay, so that's how I'm doing the oops. I want to press that, I'll get a copyright strike, get a film start playing, won't I? Um, <clears throat> these crowns the same, a little bit of espresso, just for shadows. Then our 30%. Yeah. And then 10%. And if you're concerned that it's a bit dark, we can go in with white. And like I say, detail, we will detail with a gel pen. Okay, before we put stickles over it, that is. And the same, we'll do the same with this crown up here. So, I'm going to put a little bit of espresso up here. In there. A bit along there. And... Here. Then we'll go in with our 30%. I'm going to ignore those, like I say, I'll go over them. And then our 10%. And knock it back with 
with a bit of white. And when we put a um, white gel pen around the edge of that and stickles over it, they'll look like silver crowns. That's what I hope anyway. <laughs> All right, so off camera. I've got to finish blending the path. I've got to finish doing all the little stones and boulders. This bit we'll come back to, but I'm just going to use those greens that we did for the leaves to bring that in. I've got to do all the mushroom stems. And then, centre of the flowers. And I think well, then we're pretty much that. It'll just be finishing touches like the stickles, the gel pen work. And we're pretty much that. Oh, and of course, a little creepy spider. All right, folks, um, I'm going to go off and let me bring you out and show you where we've got. So you get a good view of everything. I'm going to go off and do all of that. And then we will meet back up when we're ready to do our finishing touches, I think. All right, friends, see you in a sec. Right, so we need to finish this grass. So I picked out the green combination here that we used earlier and put my pencils here. <laughs> so we've just got this little bit around froggy and I did a little bit there just practicing. So let's come in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So I did a little bit underneath froggy. So I took the dark green and just put some flex in. Now these will more or less disappear but it does add a little bit of interest to your design. Um, this is my favourite part of doing a colouring page. When you've worked really hard, you've done lots of different elements and then it all starts to come together. Okay, so we've got our dark green flecks going on. It's not going to stay looking like that, folks. It will look like that when we've done. This is just, like I say, just for a bit of interest. All right, are we in close enough? Let me move the rest of my gubbins. This is why I lose stuff, because I move in and out and um, all my pencils get shifted. Right, so then we're going with the Kelly Green. So we're going to put the Kelly Green in around the little doodads. And we can always add more dark green if we need to. Like here, I'm going to put a bit more. I'm going to put more, a bit more dark green in here. But I'm just sort of flicking that in rather than having solid colour. There we go. Back with the Kelly Green. Yeah, we can see. A little bit more dark green in there because it's underneath him. Yeah. It's got stickles underneath it, so I can't press too hard. It's got stickles from there coming through. It's giving it a, like a funny appearance. Okay, and when we get to here, we'll go in with the Kelly Green. And then put that in. And then we'll mix in a little bit of the Celadon green, just so it's lighter towards the path. There we go, we can have a little bit of dark green in there. Some more dark green around his little toes. And then back in with our Kelly Green. A 
and just fill that up. And then we can take a step back and have a look. And you can think, okay, where do I need more dark? Does it need to be darker anywhere? Yeah, let's deepen up down here. I'm doing that quite scruffy, so we get a sort of grass appearance. There we go. And then back in with our Kelly Green. And smush that together. So we're going to put more dark green in. Because we definitely need more down here. Just scruffily put it in. And then our Kelly Green. And we can lighten off the Kelly Green. And we get up here and put some Celadon in. Like <clears throat> it's going to blend that a bit better. Mix, I'm going to mix the Celadon in so it doesn't get too dark. Like Cute, huh? That's a leaf, we need dark in here. Nearly there folks, nearly there. Okay, then we got just this little bit down here and then we're done. So let's put some dark green in. darking around those mushrooms up here that's what I mean by scruffy <laughs> and then we're going to go in with the Kelly Green any white spaces so it doesn't look just like a scruffy colouring <laughs> there we go. now these little doodads I'm going to do in jelly roll glaze I'm going to do them in blue right we're going in with a celadon green What do you think? Right, let's. Where's my. I'm going to erase this bit out. Just make sure you're in shot. I'm going to raise that bit out. Because. I like it better how we did it there. So. In with the scruffy dark green, although it's a bit harder to do it around here. But I think it just looks more effective than the flecks of green. And you guys tell me you like it when I erase things and redo it because it teaches you that you can make mistakes and you can change it. Okay. 
think we're going to put the celadon green in there now to blend that. That looks good with the celadon green over it. Sorry, there's the colours. Right, okay. We've got some semblance of grass there. Now, this path is looking a little bit bland to me. So you can do this with pencil, but I've got two jelly rolls here. And I've got, I don't know if they've got colours on them. These are jelly roll moonlight. Um, and they're just like a caramel and a beige colour. So what I'm going to do is just put some interest spots in. So like almost like gravel with these. Make sure it's running. My poor thumb. There we go. Just random dotage. Put a few more towards the edges. Like that. around those stones there we go and then we're going to do the same let's try and get all the paths in we're going to do the same here so I'm going to, this is a much darker colour get it running um, so I want more like gravel here and then we'll lessen off as the path gets wider to keep that appearance of the path widen. <laughs> but this is just all little interest pieces, you know, that I love doing to finish your page off. So, not much, but it will make a difference. Here we go. Yeah, little gravelly path. It does look different. It does make it look different, I think. All right. Now, which way round do I do this? Okay. So if we go up here and look at our little snail, I'm going to try taking that caramel colour that I had and put in some dots in. So he's got some light beige dots. Like this. Okay, I have to wait for those to dry. Then um, these, I didn't show you, did I? Was the, uh, I'm going to do 30% warm grey, 10% warm grey. So I'm just picking an edge and on the side, putting that 30% on. And then the 10%. Like that. Yeah, so they'll all just have because I'm going to put stickles on them. All right. Okay. So that's those. They're all going to have those. Then what have I got? Oh, we've got our little spidey up here. Little spidey, right, we're going to take back those colours, but I'm using black. And round his little body, round the edge, some black. Round his legs, 
and then I'm going to use a jelly roll glaze for his legs, the black jelly roll the black jelly roll glaze that we used for the the froggy's eyes. Okay. Now we're going to blend in 30% warm grey. Over here, thirty percent warm grey. Now, to bring colour from the flowers up to him, I'm going to use an orange Posca. You can use any paint pen you want, but I'm going to use an orange Posca. So he's going to have an orange cross on his back, like he's a bit poisonous. There we go. He can have some little orange beady eyes. There we go, and I'll do his legs off camera with the um, black Jelly Roll glaze pen because I don't want to smudge it. What else have I got to show you? Oh yeah, the jewels in this crown is the Secura, no, the, the um, I think it's Secura, I was going to say Jewel Metallic Hybrid. I don't know, I don't think it's by Secura, is it? And this is orange and metallic yellow. You can see that. Okay, so on his crown here, so it's still orange and um, matches with his eyes and the flowers, but not so bright, more goldy. Okay, we'll go up to this one. I'm going to have. Gold jewels there. And then I, like, don't forget, I will outline them. So they'll really show up. I'll do that off camera. You won't want to see that whole process of me outlining everything. I showed you that earlier with the gems. Okay, we can have gold in between on his necklace. Then I'm going to use a 3D like liquid pearls type of thing, which I'll show you in a second. Um, his ring. Uh -huh. right, what else have we got? Oh, his crown down here, look. So, he's got gem in the centre. Gems up there. There we go, and you can, if you want to, like pick that scallop shape out that I'd coloured over. Can you see? There we go. Uh, I think that's it. I can do that at the top here too, on this crown. He's got a scalloped edge. Uh, actually, we could put that those lines in. There we go. Uh, and we can do the same with this one. That looks cute. And then he'll be stickled. Okay, let's do them the outlying gold on this one too then. This is what's called ad libbing folks. I was gonna do it white, but it'd be quite nice to have that contrast. Alright, so what have we got left that I haven't shown you? Oh yeah, 
we've got. So I've got um, a Jelly Roll Glaze here again. I don't, they don't do the colour, but it's a really bright, lovely blue. So in the centre of these flowers, these are going to have this Jelly Roll. And that will kind of bring in a little bit more of electric from the frog. And don't forget that will be whited out and stickled. And for those of you that don't know, because I've had a few questions, stickles is a glitter glue, which I will show you shortly. There we go. Alright, then I'm going to take a yellow Posca and where Hannah's given us those dots, we're going to have yellow dots. one. I think my eyesight must be off. I never get the pen right on the dot. <laughs> there we go. So that's that. Is there anything else that I haven't shown you? No. Okay. What I'm going to do before we add stickles and the last little bit being um, I've got some 3D pearl effect and then my trusty diamond stickles that I use for everything before we add those and where did I put that? Um, Glossy accents, which I said for our snail. That's what it looks like about the right way up. Yeah, so I'm going to go off and complete all that. And then we'll come back and we'll meet up to finish like the little stars in the background. And the, I'll show you how to use the glitter glue, the glossy accents and the liquid pearls. All right, my lovely friend, see you in a sec. Okay, here it is. So we're so nearly done. I've done all the white outlining and I absolutely love the way this page looks. I love this shock of um, the jelly roll glaze. I'm obsessed with these. I'm going to have to get a whole bunch more of them. They are gorgeous. So I'm going to start at the top with my snail so that I don't um, smudge it all. This is diamond stickles. There's not much left in this one as you can see. So I will have to switch over maybe. But this is Diamond Stickles. This is Glitter Glue, in case you didn't know. And I am going to glitterize. So I'm just squeezing it. And then I'm going to use the nozzle to spread it out on our beautiful diamond at the top here. So not only have we coloured a crystal, we've made it look crystally. Let's come in, because you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, there we are. I hope the light picks that up. Let me turn this one back on. Let's see if I turn it round. Can you pick up on that gorgeous glitter? I hope so. Right, let's turn it back away from oh that's quite nice <laughs> okay I want glitter on these little doodads so I'm just putting a little drop on and spreading it out I'm hoping there'll be enough to finish this page with I have got another bottle um, but like this one it's nearly nearly done I'm gonna have to update my um, glossy accents which I'm going to show you in a second and my diamond stickle collection for me it's got to be diamond stickles I do love that I do love it because it goes over anything okay 
I think we've got a little one there. Okay. Right. <clears throat> now, this is glossy accents. And it's just like a clear, um, what does it say, dimensional medium. So I want to put that on the snail's body. So I'm just going to mind my diamond. And exactly the same as we did with the um, stickles. Squeeze a little bit on, spread it out. And be mindful how you leave it with glossy accents because that's how it will dry. So there's a lovely shot there. You can see the glossiness of the snail's body. Okay, all of these little crystals in here are going to have stickles in the centre of the flower and also all the crown. Because we can. There we go. And eventually I'm going to put stickles in the background all over those little dots. But because we've got so much going on, um, stickles here, stickles here, stickles here. <laughs> In case you didn't guess it, I like shiny and stickles. Right, this little fella's crown needs stickles. And in there, on that little plant, and up here. Goodness me, you can see the shine of the wax of the pencil there. And you're picking up the glaze there, which is brilliant. So when I come to do the um, my finished pages for the month, oh, I think, I think it died. Yeah, my stickles died. Okay, let's get another one. As I say, when I finish, come to do my finished pages of the month, um, if I leave the light there, that's, I'm going to be able to show you all the shine. Okay. Stickles. Hang on, let's get it going. Oh, let's test that on a piece of paper. There we go. Uh, and on his crown too. There we go. Alright. Now just notice we haven't done the little worm. Have we? I think he's going to be... Um, let's choose... Carrot green, aha, uh carrot -huh. green and yes, carrot green and a light green. Now I'm going to have to do this really carefully because I've got stickles everywhere. Okay, let's zoom in so you can see this little fella. Okay, so where haven't I got stickles? Okay, I'm going to have to turn the book, people, to be safe. Alright, here he is, a little worm. So I'm going to do parrot green on that side, and around his little head. And then we're taking, sorry, so that was parrot green and light green. And then in here we're going to have Spanish orange and cream. Orange in there. Spanish orange and a bit of cream. Okay, managed to do that without smudging all the stickles. Right, I'm going to come out a bit. Trying to get it so it fills the whole page, the whole screen. There we go. Right. Just taking my diamond stickles and I'm going to drop it on there. So each of these have a little sparkle. I have put a white gel pen drop in the centre. And then we've just got the necklace to show you. 
which is the 3D Pearl accents. And I figure I've already got stickles on the page, so I might as well have another bump. What's the page over? Big spider. So I might as well have another page on, another bump behind. It's okay, actually, if you just put some paper behind it. Right, now, for those of you that don't know, I will be leaving this page open overnight, at least, before I attempt to shut it. Right, I think that's it. Okay. So we've got one final little push, which is this guy. This is, for me, Dovecraft 3D Pearl Effect, and this is in um, Pastel Purple. You can get liquid pearls, but this is a UK, um, I think it's a UK version, but you can get it on Amazon Dovecraft. So, on his little necklace, because everything else is purple, where am I going to put my hand to do this? That wasn't very smart, Lucy. Okay. So, unlike... Um, let's come in a bit. Unlike the stickles, you don't spread it around with these. I just, well, this is how I do it anyway. You can do it however you want, but I put it in the centre of the pearl and then let it squidge out. And then just take that little tip off that builds up. There we go. Otherwise, you get a huge, great big bump. So I suppose I am spreading it out with the tip, aren't I? So it's just a pale pastel purple. But you can make a pearl out of it if you wanted it to be um, more bumpy. You could put more on and it will really stand off the page. And then when that's dry, I'll go round the pearls with white and outline them with a white gel pen like I've done the rest of the page. There we go. I think, dare I say it, have I got any rings? Yeah, I'm going to take that gold, if I haven't packed it away, it's the kind of thing I will have done. I'm in such a mess, folks. Ha, this one. Let's come back out. Move you back over. Sorry about the wobbling. Um, we've got a couple of little rings. So he's got a ring here. I'm just using that same gel pen that we did for the gold, which was a dual metallic hybrid, um, orange and metallic yellow. There's a ring here. And this finger or toe. And I think that's it. So folks, I think we're done. Let me come out as far as I can without losing you. There we go, so we can just get it all on. There we are. The beautiful mushroom and frog page. And I hope you can pick up on those, look at that snail, isn't he lush? Um, and the crowns, they're all sticky. Let me put them back. So once again, thank you so, so much for following along with me. I really appreciate it. If you've got any ideas for other colour alongs that you'd like to see and books that you'd like me to have a go in, please do let me know in the comments below. I'll always try and consider it and make it happen. So I won't keep you any longer because I have a feeling this is a very, very long part too. <laughs> but until we meet again in the very near future, please take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.